Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Be sure to check out Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks. TCG Player for cards at great prices while supporting local game stores. And Patreon where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. Our Patreon Discord CEDH Webcam League is in full swing this month. We are giving away $1,000 in cash prizes. All you have to do is sign up to Patreon at any tier to gain access. Check us out on Twitch every Wednesday evening for great games of CDH with special guests every week. If you sub to Twitch, you'll get additional perks such as access to our Discord. On February 26th, we are hosting a CDH tournament on our Discord. It will be 100% proxy friendly and there is over $1,200 in cash prizes. All you have to do to participate in the tournament is sign up to our Patreon. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan, Piloting Cody, Vociferous Codex. This deck seeks to cast Cody and use the activated ability to cast an Ad Nauseum. Ryan's opening hand contains a Lion's Eye Diamond, Suspend, Command Tower, Misdirection, Mana Confluence, Volcanic Island, and a Lotus Petal. Next, we have Mike, Piloting a partner pair of Tevich Zot, Doom of Fools, and Thrasios, Triton Hero. This mid-range deck looks to cheat out big creatures from the graveyard and generate value from both of its commanders. Mike's opening hand contains a Flusterstorm, Birds of Paradise, Deathrite Shaman, Nature's Claim, Mana Drain, Verdant Catacombs, and an Undergrowth Stadium. After that we have Zack, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic's Opus. This turbo deck seeks to use both commanders to draw cards and eventually cast an Ad Nauseum and go for the win. Zack's opening hand contains a Force of Negation, Demonic Tutor, Praetor's Grasp, Mana Crypt, Arid Mesa, Gemstone Caverns, and a Tarnished Citadel. Finally, we have Cal, piloting Prosper, Tomebound. This list seeks to generate value with Prosper, followed by closing out the game with a Doomsday. Cal's opening hand contains a Valky God of Lies, Forbidden Orchard, Mana Crypt, Dothy Voidwalker, Wheel of Fortune, Felwar Stone, and a Mountain. Without further ado, let's free the fickle finger of fate. Mike won the Who Can Give Me the Biggest Bribe Challenge and gets to start us off. But Zack has a pregame action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Praetor's Grasp. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Deathrite Shaman. He passes. Zack draws a card for turn and plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Monic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand and gives the turn to Cal. Cal draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Felwar Stone. He taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Zack a 1-1 Spirit to cast Dothy Voidwalker. The table sighs and Cal ships the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. Finished up, he passes to Mike. Mike draws and plays an Undergrowth Stadium. He taps Deathrite Shaman, exiling Zack's Arid Mesa to help cast Demonic Tutor. Mike fetches up a card into his hand and Demonic Tutor exiles with a Void Counter on it. He casts Birds of Paradise and gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Tarnished Citadel. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Ad Nauseum. The table groans as it appears no one has an answer. Adnaz resolves, and Zack reveals a Lotus Petal, Ragavan Nimble Pilferer, Brain Freeze, Intuition, Underworld Breach, Dark Confidant, Vampiric Tutor, Felwar Stone, Talisman of Dominance, Mana Vault, Dark Ritual, Wheel of Fortune, Mana Confluence, Shatter Skull Smashing, Wish Claw Talisman, Volcanic Island, Diabolic Intent, Gamble, Talisman of Creativity, Opposition Agent, Sensei's Divining Top, and a Mox Diamond deciding to stop there. Then Ad Nauseam is exiled through Dothi with a Void Counter. Zack casts Lotus Petal. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Volcanic Island into exile. He cracks Lotus Petal and casts Dark Ritual, adding three black. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Felwar Stone. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing his spirit. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Ryan responds by sacrificing his Lotus Petal into exile. Dockside resolves, and Zack creates three treasures. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and discards a card at random, which is a Dranith Magistrate, into exile. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Dockside. Dockside bounces, and he sacrifices a land, copying the chain, targeting his own Mana Crypt. Crypt bounces, he sacks a land, and bounces his own Mana Vault. He sacks his last land, and then bounces Cal's Dothy Voidwalker. Cal decides not to continue the chain. Zack recasts Mana Crypt. He recasts Mana Vault. He recasts Dockside, creating three treasures. He casts Underworld Breach. He falls up by casting a Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. He mills, hoping to hit a Lion's Eye Diamond. Luckily, he does. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond from his graveyard. He cracks Lion's Eye Diamond, discarding his hand and adding three black. 
He escapes LED from his graveyard again. He cracks it, adding three blue. He escapes brain freeze from his graveyard with all copies targeting himself. He mills the remainder of his library. Zack escapes Thassa's Oracle from his graveyard. Thassa's Oracle resolves, and Zack wins the game. Well, since that was a quick game, let's do another. In this game, Ryan pilots Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. This Rakdos deck seeks to disrupt hands and then loop Ryan's favorite card, World Gorger Dragon. Ryan's opening hand contains a Forbidden Orchard, Mind Blade Render, Talisman of Indulgence, Imperial Seal, Toxic Deluge, Imp's Mischief, and his London Mulligan is a Chaos Warp. Next, we have Mike, piloting a zombie, Lady of Scrolls. This mid-range list looks to control the game until it can set up a combo through Isochron Scepter or Laboratory Maniac. Mike's opening hand contains a Dig Through Time, Sigil Tracer, Malevolent Hermit, Moon Silver Key, Grim Monolith, Soul Ring, and a Snow-Covered Island. After that, we have Zack, piloting a Sika, God of the Tree. This storm list aims to get Jeskai Ascendancy onto the battlefield and storm off for the win. Zack's opening hand contains an Opt, Chrome Mox, Lavinia, Asorius Renegade, Ponder, Arid Mesa, Tundra, and a Soul Ring. Finally, we have Cal, piloting Marwyn the Nurturer. This list seeks to cast Marwyn and many, many more elves to storm the only way Mono Green knows how. Cal's opening hand contains a Snow-Covered Forest, Castle Garenbrig, Priest of Titania, Karamitra's Acolyte, Birds of Paradise, Autumn's Veil, and his London Mulligan is a scale up. And Ryan gets to start us off. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He taps it, giving Mike a spirit to help cast Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Ryan passes. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a Snow-Covered Island. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts Moon Silver Key. He moves to combat and attacks Zack with his spirit. Zack takes it and Mike passes the turn. Zack draws and plays a Tundra. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Opt. He casts Lavinia, Azorius Renegade. Everyone groans and Zack passes. Cal draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts Birds of Paradise. He ships the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Badlands. He taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Cal a spirit to help cast his commander, Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. Kroxa enters the battlefield and each opponent discards a card. Zack discarded a land and loses three life. Mike just so happened to discard Malevolent Hermit. Then Ryan sacrifices Kroxa, putting it back into the command zone. Ryan gives the turn to Mike. Mike draws and plays a snow-covered island. He casts Grim Monolith and moves to combat. He attacks Ryan with his spirit. Ryan takes it and Mike passes the turn. Zack draws and casts a Soul Ring. He casts Ponder. He looks at the top three, doesn't like what he sees, shuffles and draws. With nothing left, he ships the turn. Cal draws and plays a Castle Garenbrig. He casts his commander, Marwyn the Nurturer. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with his spirit. Ryan takes it and Cal passes. Ryan draws and taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Zack a spirit to help cast Mind Blade Render. Ryan passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike activates Moon Silver Key, sacrificing it and fetching up a snow-covered island into his hand. Mike draws and plays a snow-covered island. He casts his commander, Azami, Lady of Scrolls. He passes. Zack draws and casts a Tormod Script. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. He cracks his LED, discarding his hand to help cast his commander, Asika, God of the Tree. Boldly, Zack passes. Cal draws and casts Elvish Mystic. Marwyn triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. He follows up with a Priest of Titania and Marwyn gets another counter. Cal moves to combat and attacks Mike with Marwyn. Mike takes it and Cal passes. Ryan draws and taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Mike a spirit to help cast Talisman of Indulgence. Ryan ships the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike activates his Zombie, tapping her and drawing a card. Mike draws and casts Benevolent Geist from his graveyard for its disturbed cost. He taps his Zombie to draw a card. He taps his Benevolent Geist to draw a card. He passes, discarding to hand size. Zack draws and moves to combat. He attacks Mike with a Sika. Mike takes it, and with no other actions, Zack passes. Cal draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts Karamitra's Acolyte. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Marwyn and his spirit. Mike walks Marwyn and takes the rest. All through, Cal ships the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a Prismatic Vista. He cracks Vista, pays a life, and fetches up a Swamp onto the battlefield. He casts Rakdos Signet. He moves to combat and attacks Mike with Mind Blade Render. Mike walks with his spirit, and Ryan passes the turn. Mike draws and taps a zombie to draw a card. He plays a Snow-Covered Island. He casts Sigil Tracer. He casts Jeweled Lotus. Although there is a Lavinia on the board, Benevolent Geist makes the Jeweled Lotus uncounterable. Smugly, Mike hands the turn to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Plateau. He passes. Cal draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Marwyn. Ryan takes it, and Cal ships the turn. Ryan draws and recasts his commander, Kroxa. In response, Zack casts Banishing Knack, targeting his spirit. 
Croxa resolves, each opponent discards a card, Zack loses 3 life, and then Ryan sacrifices Croxa into the graveyard instead of the command zone. Ryan passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike taps Sigil Tracer through Azami. In response, Zack taps his spirit targeting Benevolent Geist, attempting to bounce it through Banishing Knack. In response, Mike taps Benevolent Geist through Azami. Mike draws, Geist bounces, then Mike draws again. With nothing else, the turn moves to Mike. Mike draws and plays a snow-covered island. He casts Malevolent Hermit and gives the turn to Zack. Zack draws, takes no actions, and sadly passes the turn. Cal draws and plays a snow-covered forest. He casts Cloudstone Curio. In response, Mike taps Malevolent Hermit to draw a card. Cal moves to combat and attacks Mike with Marwin. Mike takes it and Cal ships the turn. Ryan draws and casts Toxic Deluge where X equals 4, pain for life. In response, Mike taps a zombie to draw a card. He taps Sigil Tracer to draw a card. Mike then chooses not to sacrifice Malevolent Hermit and Deluge resolves. All creatures get minus 4, minus 4, wiping the board. Ryan taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Zack a spirit to help cast Animate Dead. In response, Mike casts Counterspell, countering Animate Dead. Ryan passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike delves away some of his graveyard to help cast Dig Through Time. He looks at the top seven, puts two into his hand, and bottoms the rest. The turn moves to Mike. During Mike's upkeep, in order to stop his win, Zack casts Silence. In response, Mike hard casts Force of Negation, countering and exiling Silence. He draws and casts Mox Opal. He casts Mana Crypt. He transmutes Muddle the Mixture, fetching up an Isochron Scepter into his hand. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He casts Isochron Scepter. It resolves, and Mike imprints Dramatic Reversal. Mike presents a loop of activating Isochron, untapping all of his non-land permanents, netting mana, and reactivating Isochron. He recasts Azami. He presents the same loop, but now taps Azami to draw a card each time. He uses this loop to draw his entire deck. Mike casts Thassa's Oracle. Oracle resolves, and Mike wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun set of games. Congrats to Zack and Mike on their wins tonight. In game one, an early ad nauseum is pretty hard to beat, and Zack was able to win even through a Dolphy Voidwalker. In game two, it's not every day that you see Thassa's Oracle as the win con in a mono blue deck, but a zombie does make it look awesome. This deck gives you a lot of options and is a blast to pilot. Mike showed it off in true form tonight and was really cool to see it in action. The most viable card in tonight's first game goes to Chain of Vapor. Zack was able to continue his storm and go mana positive by bouncing his own permanence before getting rid of the pesky Voidwalker. The most viable card in tonight's game goes to Lavinia, Azorius Renegade. While it may not have been obvious in the game, this card was actually stopping so many people from really doing anything. It completely stalled the board to the point where no one was really able to do anything. Well that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time and we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.